Oh yeah. Last time, we have seen that prayer is an invitation from God. So it's our response to God's invitation. We have seen that we can come to God the way we are, to discover Him, to get to know Him, that we can do it anywhere, anytime, and that there are no laws or magics about the way to enter prayer. We don't need to follow rules and regulations. It's a free conversation with God. Now today we want to look at discovering God. Because when you are a newcomer to the faith, even before you decide what to do with your life and whether to follow God, you need to know Him a bit. And I invite you to open the Bible to what is called the New Testament. That's the more modern part of the Bible that contains the Gospel, the letters of Paul and Peter, and uh, the uh, Revelation, the last part, written by John. If you look at the Gospels, you can start with the Gospel of Luke, and then maybe go to the Gospel of John, and discover what Jesus did during his years of ministry on earth find out who he, who he said he was, who he said he is, and the report that his earliest disciples made concerning him, his life, his death, his resurrection, and last words before he left. And that will help you to know him a bit better, because Faith in Jesus is believing that He is who He says He is, the only way to the Father God. Another thing we want to look at is prayer as a conversation is already recorded in the Bible, in particular in the Psalms at the center of the Bible. And I want to encourage you, if you don't know what Bible to read, maybe you want to read the message. That's a modern version of the Bible. Or the New International Version, the NIV. But the message is talking in everyday language. And I give you an example with Psalm 16, he said, Keep me safe, O God. I run for dear life to you. I say to God, Be my God. Without you, nothing makes sense. And these God-chosen lives all around, what splendid friends they make. Don't go shopping for a God. Gods are not for sale. I swear I will never treat God's name like brand name. My choice is you, God, first and only, and now I find I am your choice. You set me up with a house and yard, and then you made me your heir. That's Psalm 16. And you find that many of the Psalms are actually recorded conversation. God says something, then the psalmist says something, then God replies, and it's easy to find when you read it. And then lastly, there are many ways God speaks. He speaks, first of all, through his word, the Bible. It's like a manual for our lives, a record of the word of God. It's just like reading, r reading letters from God. But God also speaks through his creation. You look at scenery around you, the trees, the plants, the birds, the animals, 
and everything speaks of God, his beauty, his precision, his care, his love. God also speaks through people and sometimes even through little kids. If you are attentive to the conversations, you hear sometimes things that God meant for you. And lastly, and very importantly too, God speaks directly to you in ways that you can discern. But if you really want to hear his voice, you need the Holy Spirit. And for that, you have to make a step forward and tell God, I want to know more about you, I want to follow you, I want to belong to your family. You have already been invited by him. All it requires is you approach him. And if you look, there are examples, first of all in the Bible, the prophet Isaiah thought he knew God until in chapter 6 of his book of Isaiah he said that he had a revelation of God the day King Uzziah died in his time. He saw a revelation of God and his first reaction was Oh, I'm so ugly, I'm so sinful, God is so holy. He realized the stark difference between him and God. And that led him to ask for forgiveness, for having missed it. And we all know how sorry we are sometimes when we realize that we didn't do or we didn't say what we are supposed to do and say. And that is how our life as friends of God, as children of God starts with a recognition of who he is, the one you have discovered through the Bible, through the Gospels, through the Psalms, and then a realization that you cannot match that, that you know that you are not a perfect person, far from it, we are, none of us are. And so we have to ask God to forgive us for all that we missed all, all along the years and a surrender to the Lord. But it's not a flat submission. It's entering a family where God is going to bring you to the highest you could be, the perfect person he has dreamt of you. So it's not a submission and a smashing of you is a discovery of the real you as planned from eternity the real joy the real satisfaction the real peace and i invite you to enter that family to come to know god more and if you do that when you do it then you start learning how to talk to god the Holy Spirit will come into you and lead you, give you prompts, give you words, give you images, and you will know how to express your heart to God and hear from Him. Bless you.